Hello, happy people. Welcome to our daily devotional scripture that encourages you to pray. I want to encourage you to also share this broadcast onto your social media. Use lots of positive emojis. When you do that, you're doing the work of the evangelist in the modern context of church work today. Um, I want to also encourage you to use the prayer app. Put your prayer requests in, your praise reports in. Our prayer team, which has grown to 23 prayer partners, would love to pray with you and pray for you. And um, we'd love to serve you in any way we can. So tonight we're going to look at um, a very important thing, and that is the desire of Jesus to help us trust in him in his victorious resurrection over sin and death and the devil, and specifically in the context of the immediately after the resurrection. And so we're going to be looking at John chapter 20, and this is uh, the second Sunday after Easter, the second Sunday of Easter, we should say, Uh, and Jesus is again appearing to the disciples. It's on Sunday. They're gathered again on a Sunday in a home, and uh, Jesus appears there, and this time Thomas is there, and Jesus says, hey, stick your finger in my side. Check this out. And we're going to talk about that, and the question we're going to look at tonight is this, would touching Jesus be enough? Would touching Jesus be enough? I want to say thank you to our social media team. You guys do an awesome job of helping people feel welcome, navigate the social media. And you just literally, I love what, how you do ministry with people from around the world, sharing prayer requests. And uh, so I praise God for your partnership in the gospel. Guys, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. Thank you for all of your blessings in our lives. Thank you, Father, for your son and for his concern for us to have our questions answered, our our doubts erased, to grow in our confidence in our walk with you. So bless us to that end through the power of your word by the work of the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name according to your will for your glory, and all of God's children, we all say, amen, amen. So, uh, we're going to talk about this topic of touching. Uh, You know, would touching Jesus be enough? And, you know, as I was thinking about it, you know, the thought came to me that, you know, touching really is a very powerful reassurance. So, for example, you know, you think of some biblical stories, like Isaac, right? He uh, wanted to touch who he thought was Esau. Of course, it it wasn't Esau, it was Jacob. But touching meant a lot to Isaac. And so it was something that he he, um, wanted to do so that he would know, or he would think he would know in his mind, who he was talking to here. Um, Another example, uh, which is kind of interesting to study uh, in more depth, and I'm not going to go into all the depth of it here, um, but uh, Abraham, when he wants a wife to be found for his son Isaac, Abraham tells his servant Eleazar to uh, put his hand, Eleazar, for Eleazar to put Eleazar's hand, his own hand, under Abraham's thigh. And uh, there's like two basic different ways of sort of understanding what's going on there. Um, and I and I would encourage you to, to study it a little bit for yourself. Um, one way is to look at it is that the, the Jewish practice in those days was that you would touch a man's uh, private parts, the testicles, and uh, that is actually etymology etymologically where we get the word testify from in case you didn't know that's where that word comes from originally a couple thousand years ago and um, is from that practice and uh, and um, Jacob would also do this with Joseph with his own son Joseph he would have Joseph do the same thing with him as an oath that that um, that Jacob would not be uh, buried in Egypt, but that his body would be carried back into the promised land, which Joseph fulfilled that, we remember. Um, you know, touching uh, is a powerful reassurance. So, for example, in more modern everyday life, um, when you go to the grocery store and you're looking at vegetables, uh, you know, you might pick them up and touch them to see, you know, are, are they ripe? Are they ready to take home? Uh, is, are they how you want them? A, a little child uh, will oftentimes be comforted by their mother uh, running their fi- her fingers uh, through uh, his or her hair. There's great reassurance. There's great comfort in touching. And so um, 
Thomas, the Apostle Thomas, you know, has said that he wants to touch himself. He wants to touch the wounds. He, he wants to see for himself. And, you know, rather than making fun of Thomas, who was an apostle after all, and they all had their doubts, I think if we just look at the broader context of Scripture, we see that there's a lot of this uh, going on in Scripture, and people get reassurance through it. And, and Jesus does not condemn Thomas for this. Um, John 20, 27, uh, Jesus says to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, put out your hand, put it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And so Jesus, in fact, invites Thomas to touch him. And so again, the question for our devotion tonight is, would touching Jesus be enough? Well, the enemies of Jesus would have said yes. The enemies of Jesus would have said yes, uh, touching him would be would be wonderful. It would be more than enough. In fact, uh, Jesus' enemies would have loved to have touched Jesus. Uh, they thought that this would have solved all their problems. I mean, just read throughout the gospel accounts of how many times they tried to touch Jesus. You know, you're starting with King Herod in the second chapter of Matthew wanting to get his hands on him as an infant, right? And then, you know, all the way up through Holy Week. Uh, throughout Holy Week, they, they plot against Jesus, how they're going to get their hands on him, how they're going to touch him. Um, at the beginning of his ministry, you read about in Luke chapter 4, uh, he's, he's back in his hometown of Nazareth. And what do these uh, religious leaders do there? Uh, they, they try to touch him they, and, and throw him off a cliff outside of town there. All right? But the, the truth of the matter is that you and I also try to touch Jesus, if you will, for less than godly reasons. Um, I would, and you might say, well, how, how in the world are we doing that? Well, when we twist his words, you know, when we take the words of Jesus and we twist his words, aren't we really touching him for less than a godly reason? Um, or when we don't want to hear his words at all, when we know that we should be speaking his words and we, and we try to silence the, the words of Christ. Uh, because the, it's inconvenient for us because of the context of our audience or, or some decision that's being made or something that we're wrestling with in our conscience. You know, we, are, we also are touching Jesus in a way that is not correct, that is not pleasing to God. The good news, in part, is that Jesus knew that letting his enemies simply touch him would never be enough. I want to say that again. Jesus knew that letting his enemies touch him would not be enough to fulfill what was required. Jesus knew that, that they must hit him, whip him, spit upon him, stab him, humiliate him, make him naked, nail him to the cross, and that he would have to die. And so it's this Savior of ours who loves us this much that he's willing to not just be touched, but to go through the crucifixion for our resurrection, for our eternal life. It is this Jesus who offers to Thomas that he, Thomas, can touch him. You know, when you study this event, um, most theologians, most conservative theologians, don't think that Thomas actually did touch Jesus. And, and you can sort of see why, based on the exchange there that happens between Thomas and Jesus, my Lord and my God, you know. Um, but there's an Italian uh, painter by the name of Caravaggio, who in 1601, if memory serves me correctly, painted that very famous painting of Thomas touching Jesus' side. And it's, it's, I, I shared it onto my Facebook page, and I gave proper accreditation, so I followed fair use laws. And, uh, but it's interesting in that painting because in the painting, uh, Jesus is de depicted as taking Thomas's hand and pulling his hand to his side and then sort of sticking his finger into Jesus' side. And so it's Jesus who's not just saying, look and touch and see, but he's also acting on his words, which kind of, you know, makes sense. And, and, and so it's, uh, it's an interesting portrayal that the, the, the painter has there. And what about us today? Jesus offers us his body and his blood in communion. Even as God was in, with, and under the physical body of Christ, so also Christ is in, with, and under the very bread and wine we touch. And what about us as we live out our Christian lives? 
I would submit to you that when you as a Christian take someone's hand in prayer, that they are touching the hand of Christ. And that when you wipe a tear from someone's face, they have felt the hand of Christ. And I say this because of what Jesus says in Matthew 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he, that's Jesus, will sit on his glorious throne. Then the king will say to those on his right, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? Are thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you? Are naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? Listen to these words. And the king will answer to them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. I want to close with this thought and share a couple scripture passages with you. To a world that would reach out and touch Jesus, you are his vessel filled with his grace. Let me share these verses with you. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Jesus Christ is in you. Romans 8, 10. Christ is in you. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 and 7. We have this treasure that is Christ hidden in these earthen vessels, which is our bodies. Galatians 1, 15 and 16. God called me by his grace to reveal his Son, who is in me. Galatians 2.20 It is Christ who lives in me. And finally, Galatians 4.19 Christ is formed in you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, make sure that the world feels Jesus when they touch you. Amen? Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Let's go in his peace. Let's serve him this week. Amen.